Jofasun. I did this when I hauled this book. I can't say this author's name. Joseph Sun. Joseph Sun. Dylan Joseph. Jo <laughs> everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my July TBR for 2021 if you are new to this channel then you do not know this but my mom actually picks my TBR every month and she always has a fun little theme to go along with the books that she chose so this month's theme is summer storms so without further ado let us get started so the first book that she chose for her Summer Storms TBR does not make sense, but in her head this was a good idea. She chose Immortal Rain by Morgan Rhodes. This is the sixth book in the Falling Kingdom series. Have I read the first book? No. Did I tell her that? Yes. Does the first book have falling in it so that you could use it as like falling rain? Yes, it does. And yet, she still chose this one because it said rain. And it's not even the correct spelling of rain. It's fine. She was like, I chose this, so we're doing it. And I was like, all right, lady. So this is the first book. Will I be reading this this month? No, I will not because, like I said, I have not even read the first book. And this is the sixth one. So, moving on. The next book that she chose was Storm Crow. This is by Kaylin Josephson nailed that one. And this one is because it says storm in it, summer storm, you know, but this follows a princess named Anthea who lives in a society where previously crows were very highly renowned and a battling kingdom of Eleusian killed all the crows, killing her dreams of becoming a crow rider one day. Anthea's sister Kaliza is the reigning queen after their mother's death and so she is very busy leading the kingdom. Eliza ends up being put into the position where she needs to accept a marriage proposal between Thea and the crown prince of Eleusia. This finally wakes Thea up because she wants no part in this marriage and then her and her sister stumble across a crow egg in a cave and they decide to raise it in secret in the hopes of bringing the crows back to life and it's like the story of that. I have had this book for so long now because I was sent the second book in this series unsolicited so I ended up purchasing the first book so that I could read the first and the second book. Have I read them yet? Clearly not. So we're very behind because I think the second book was released in 2019. So going back to like my goals of 2021, I'm trying to read my ARC backlist. So I have some from 2019 that I still have not read. We're very far behind, which is why it was one of the goals. So we're going to hopefully read this and then we can get the arc back list done. Next up, she chose Shatter the Sky by Rebecca Kim Wells. This is because it's Shatter the Sky, so like lightning shatters the sky, you know, you get it. But I'm just gonna read like the little blurby thing that's supposed to catch your attention because I am so here for this book. It says, Marin sets out to rescue her kidnapped girlfriend by stealing a dragon from the corrupt emperor in this angry feminist bisexual dragon YA fantasy novel. Yes, please. I'm so excited for this. I didn't even know what this was about when I got sent it, but now I am intrigued. I think this is another, yeah, 2019 arc that I have not read, so... Like I said, get in that backlist down. Next, she chose And I Darken by Kristen White. She chose this for Darken, the skies get dark when there's a summer storm. This is a Vlad the Impaler gender bent retelling. So, Vlad is now named Lada which Vlad, Lada, I guess it makes sense. Everybody on booktube has read this book except for me so hopefully we're gonna get this done. I have this book and the second in the series. Do not own the third but we're gonna see if we enjoy the first two before we go and buy the third one because we need to get better at that because I always buy the whole series and then I hate the first book. So that's not gonna happen this time. We're gonna control ourselves. Next up, uh, her reasoning doesn't make sense to me, but we're gonna go with it. She chose When the Lights Went Out by Bridget Morrisley, and I'm just gonna read you what she said because I had to text her before filming this video to find out her reason for this because I didn't understand. And she said, excessive heat and electrical use for air conditioning causes power cuts and blackouts. 
duh. So the lights go out because of the summer storm heat and excessive use of air conditioning. This follows a group of seven used to be friends. They were inseparable until one of their friends got shot by a loaded gun that nobody knew was loaded. It's been five years since these friends have been together and they're hosting like a anniversary of this girl's death. Her name was Marley and one of the friends named Olivia was the only witness to the murder. She gets an unexpected visit from a guy named Nick who was actually the one who pulled the trigger because he didn't know that the gun was loaded and it ended up shooting and killing Marley. So Nick showing up ends up making it the first time that all of the friends are back together in one place and then Olivia ends up finding like a scavenger hunt that was left by Marley years ago and so all of them decide to go off on this scavenger hunt and they discover that Marley may have actually known that the gun was loaded and it's like the story of that. So I am intrigued. I'm very curious because I have literally never seen anybody haul this book or talk about it or anything on booktube so I literally have no idea what people think of it. I Next up is Windfall. This is by Jennifer E. Smith and this is because it says wind with summer storms there's a lot of wind going on but this follows two best friends and on the 18th birthday of the one friend the girl ends up buying him a lottery ticket as like a joke. He ends up winning 140 million dollars. This causes their relationship to kind of spiral because all this money is now in between them and it's like is it a curse? Is it a windfall? we don't know. That's one of the lines in the synopsis. It says, as they try to find their way back to each other, Alice learns more about herself than she ever could have imagined and about the unexpected ways in which luck and love sometimes intersect. So I'm assuming it's just like your typical contemporary love story. Again, this is one that I saw a lot of people haul but never actually talk about on booktube, so no idea people's thoughts on it. Hopefully it's a good one. I'm thinking it'll be a nice little break from all the thrillers and fantasy that I have been reading lately, so. And then the final book that she chose was Rainbow Rowell's Landline, and this is because at the end of Summer Storms, there's usually a rainbow. You see what she did there? This follows like a girl named Georgie who finds a magical phone that gives her the ability to like call into the past and so she decides that she is going to call her husband Nick and fix all their problems in the future. I haven't read a Rainbow Rowell book since Fangirl in like 2019 or something like that so it has been quite a while. I do own Carry On and this one and a Attachments, I think. Maybe I don't own attachments, but the point is I haven't read a Rainbow Rowell in a very long time. Hopefully I like this one. We shall see. All right, everybody. So that was my July 2021 TBR. I do not know how much reading will actually be done because I'm going back to work starting June 28th and I'm still in school. So it's going to be a lot to juggle but we'll see how much actually gets read. I'm guessing not that much, but fingers crossed we do some reading this month, but let me know down below if you've read any of these books, or what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!